Okay, let's look at this work energy and power question. Work energy and power question 5 November 2016. Here are all my work energy power um, formulas that I might need. So this one is um, not on the data sheet. The sum of the mechanical energy before is equal to the sum of the mechanical energy afterwards. And this one's in that other section there, but sometimes we need it for friction. Okay, but I've put it here because I don't like typing these things in again. Let's have a look here. A pendulum with a bob of mass 5 kilos is held stationary at a height h above the ground. When released, it collides with a block of mass 2 kilos, which is stationary at point A. The bob swings past A and comes to rest momentarily at a position a quarter h above the ground. The diagrams below are not drawn to scale. Immediately after the collision, the 2 kg block begins to move from A to B at a constant speed of 4,95 meters per second. Ignore frictional effects and assume that no loss of mechanical energy occurs during the collision. Calculate the kinetic energy of the block immediately after the collision. Okay, this is easy. We're going to use this formula. EK equals a half mv squared. So we write out the formula. EK, where's the K? Equals a half mv squared. Okay. So my EK is going to be a half, what was my mass of that block? It was 2 kilos, and then my V is 4,95, and this is going to be squared. That's not the squared. Squared. Let's do it the old-fashioned irritating way. Okay, so now if we plug these values into our calculator, we will get whatever 4,95 squared is, because half of 1 is 1, 24,50. No unit, no mark. What is the unit of energy? It is joules. Okay, so it's 24,50 joules. Then it says to you, calculate the height h. So here is the height h. Okay, so now it's kind of like, how are we going to calculate this? We're going to calculate this because this h and this h are the same h, so they're our variable. And we're just going to trust the process and the formula. It says to you, assume no loss of mechanical energy occurs during the collision. So this, yes, the mechanical energy initial is equal to the mechanical energy final, the sum of them. We can use this formula here. So let's go ahead and work out the sum of the mechanical energy. Remember, there's a block and a bob, okay? So the sum of them is going to be the block, the bob, this pendulum bob and the block. So initially, if we have a look at the um, bob, it's got kinetic energy, okay? It's Okay, well, let's have a look here. What is EMEC, first of all? It's EK plus EP bob initial plus EK plus EP, what's that thing? Block initial is going to be EK plus EP bob final plus EK plus EP block, block, final. Okay, that's what we mean when we say the sum of the mechanical energy before is equal to the sum of the mechanical energy afterwards. Did a lot of these calculations in grade 10, admittedly not with bobs and blocks, but you did them anyway. So what was the kinetic energy of the bob at the beginning? It was zero. It was held stationary there. What was... The potential energy there, it was mgh. Remember, potential energy is mgh. So the mass of the bob, 5 kilos. Okay, so it's 5 mg 9.8. And h is just h. Okay, so that's my bob. And now we're going to add the block. And at the beginning, it was 0 plus zero because the um, block 
was stationary and so it's got no kinetic energy and we're using the surface here as the zero reference for potential energy so it's equal to zero so then remember in the question here it says to you the bob swings past a and comes to rest momentarily at a position a quarter h above the ground okay so here the kinetic energy again for the bob is zero because remember it says to you it says comes to rest momentarily so that's a zero and now we want to calculate its um, potential energy so this is going to be its mass five times g 9.8 times h and it is a quarter h look here it says to your position a quarter h above the ground so we're going to just put in here a quarter h so that's my bob and now we need to find it for the block so what was the kinetic energy of the block finally we actually know this here because the kinetic energy of the block in this situation is this kinetic energy so we can just type this in from the previous question or if you really want to you can go put in the um, all these numbers in again here like this it's handy dandy copy this okay and then we are going to add what for the potential energy nothing because it has not lifted off above the ground okay so if you put this in your calculator you're going to get an h on the left in your calculator that should give you 49 h and on the right here on the right here i've got 12,25 h plus the answer to the last question 24,5 okay and now by the power of algebra you can work out this is going to be 49h minus 12,25h equals 24,5. Okay, so now use your calculator. You'll end up with a h is equal to 0, 0,67 meters. Okay, so we found the height h, which is what the question was asking for. Okay. Now it says to you, we're going to look at the block, which weighed two kilos. The block moves from point B at a velocity of 4.95 meters per second up a rough inclined plane to point C. The speed of the block at point C is two meters per second. Block C is a half a meter above the horizontal as shown in the diagram. During its motion from B to C, a uniform frictional force acts on the block. So a frictional force, non-conservative force, okay. State the work energy theorem, boom, quite easily done. Here's your thing, make sure you learn this, it always appears. Use energy principles to calculate the work done by the frictional force when the two kilo block moves from point B to point C. So as far as I'm concerned, we've only got one non-conservative force here and it's friction. So we can go back and you see this formula, this non-conservative wor uh, work formula. I'm we can use this non-conservative work formula here. So the work non-conservative is equal to the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy. So let's try and work this out here. So what will the non-conservative work? Because the non-conservative work is the friction. Remember, friction is a non-conservative force. What is delta EK? It's a half MV final minus a half MV initial. So let's go a half what was the m of this block it was two kilos am i right yes it's two kilos it's a half of two kilos and then here i'm going to be v final squared minus v initial squared so my v final is two squared okay minus what was my initial 4.95 squared okay notice where the squares are do not mess up and put your squares here plus the change in potential energy now remember the mass is not going to change the acceleration due to gravity is not going to change so i can put the mg outside the brackets and go hf minus h in initial okay so the m here 
is 2, the G is 9.8, and then it's H final, which is a half a meter. Look here, it went up a half a meter, H final minus H initial, which is 0. Okay, so then if you look here, you've got WNC equals minus 20.5, if you use your calculator, plus 9.8. So you end up with WNC, which is your friction in your calculator, minus 10.7, no unit, no mark. It is minus 10.7 joules. Do not be alarmed that this is a negative number. Remember, it's a non-conservative force, so it's taking energy out of the system. So this minus is indicating it's taking energy out of the system. And there we are, finished.